1988, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers would be released into theaters and would give us the boogeyman back on the big screen. But Halloween 4 was almost very, very different. After the critical failure of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch in 1982, the Halloween franchise took a break for a few years. A lot of people at the top had ideas where they wanted the franchise to go, and the rights needed a new home. During that time period, John Carpenter had an idea with his co-writer, Deborah Hill. See, the impetus with Halloween 3 Season of the Witch was to bring Halloween back into theaters. It was a lucrative property, but John Carpenter and Deborah Hill had no interest in following along with Michael Myers after Halloween 2. So, trying the anthology route, it didn't exactly land with audiences, and we were back at square one. John Carpenter wanted to bring Halloween back in the mid-80s, but he still wanted it to be different. He knew that Michael Myers had to be incorporated somehow after he saw what happened with Halloween 3, but he didn't exactly know how yet. In 1986, he hired a friend of his, Dennis Etchison, who penned the novelization of the original Halloween film, to write a script for a Halloween 4 idea. After having been approached to write a novelization for The Fog, John and Deborah wanted to work with Dennis again. They wanted him to write Halloween 4. And Dennis Etchison was absolutely on board with that. This Halloween 4 was very, very different. The idea of Dennis Etchison, John Carpenter, and Deborah Hill's Halloween 4 was going to be that the town had banned Halloween in Haddonfield. They didn't even recognize it anymore. It didn't exist. You couldn't go trick-or-treating. You couldn't dress up. This film would have also seen the return of Deputy Hunt, who is also now the sheriff, played by Hunter Von Lear, which would have kept continuity with the first two movies. The movie was going to center around Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace. It was going to be 10 years after the original Halloween and Halloween 2. The idea was that after 10 years of repression and suppression, and basically ignoring the holiday altogether, some hints would start to pop up that Michael Myers is back. As Dennis Etchison put it, I foresaw on the poster the words, the night he came home again. And I had this set piece in mind where Michael Myers comes bursting up out of a big lot of pumpkins, erupting out of this orange mound. That would be a nice shot to use on the poster. Etchison went on to continue. At one point, there was a speech. There was going to be a town meeting and everybody is up in arms about whether they should have Halloween or not. This was going to take place at a drive-in, the Lost River drive-in, funny enough, where I get my namesake. This was a real drive-in in Bowling Green, Kentucky, that John Carpenter had visited many times. During this town meeting, the guy who ran the Lost River drive-in said, you can't ban a night of Halloween movies. I'm trying to make a living here. Kids want to see horror movies. Well, maybe they shouldn't. Some people are saying maybe it's better if they don't see them. So the whole idea was repression versus acknowledging the bad things in the world. So a common theme from this movie was going to be repressing something and ignoring it, not acknowledging what happened, almost fed it. It festered so long to the point where it reared its ugly head stronger than before. But it was different this time. See, the tact for this idea of Halloween 4 wasn't going to be to have flesh and blood Michael Myers walking around Haddonfield killing people. No. Michael Myers was truly going to be a specter, a ghostly figure, an apparition, whatever you want to call it. There's a specific scene in the script where there was going to be a Halloween horror night at the drive-in theater, where Michael Myers, or the ghost of Michael Myers, was going to kill dozens upon dozens of patrons. This was going to be, as Dennis Etchison put it, probably in the triple figures in this scene alone. Move over Halloween Kills. John Carpenter and Dennis Etchison had the ultimate slasher movie concept years prior. So whereas the original Halloween and Halloween 2 played on the fact that Michael Myers might be more than a man but never called it out, Halloween 4 was going to do that. John Carpenter and Deborah Hill were not interested in bringing the man Michael Myers back. The myth, the legend, the specter that he became through years of repression and denial is what they were bringing back. It's almost like the town of Haddonfield fed the beast by trying to pretend the beast was never real. That was a really cool theme that this script played on. There's even a moment near the end of the script where Michael Myers was going to be taking a shelling from police officers. 
and he would be absorbing the bullets and growing 12 feet large, a giant ghostly Michael Myers. Now, you probably hear that and you go, well, that's stupid. That is absolutely insane. But for the script, it worked because the idea was feeding something. And this would be the physical manifestation of literally feeding the specter of Michael Myers violence. Repression was enough to bring him back, attacking him, feeding him with that violence, that anger, that hatred would make him bigger, stronger. It truly was an idea that you look back on and you're like, that's like elevated horror 40 years ago. Now, with Tommy and Lindsay being the focus of this movie, it would have been really cool to see where they were at in their teenage years, to see how that night affected them and to see that natural progression. Move away from Laurie Strode, move away from the family angle, and have this really just be about the town. This was an idea that intrigued myself and many others now. An idea that we look back on and we say, why couldn't we do this movie now? So what happened? What happened to John Carpenter, Deborah Hill, and Dennis Etchison's Halloween 4? This is how Dennis Etchison put it. A few weeks later, I stopped by Deborah Hill's office to pick up a copy of the final retyping of the script. She had a tall stack of them in front of her and said, we're sending these out to the investors. And then, sometime later, I got a call from her saying, I just wanted to tell you, John and I have sold our interest in the Halloween franchise, and unfortunately, your script was not part of the deal. Who knows why? Apparently, the partners hired something like 10 other writers to work on it after me, and I lost a Writers Guild arbitration over the credits, even though I was the first writer on the project, so my name's not on the picture. Some other interesting tidbits about this iteration of Halloween 4. It was Canon Films that approached John Carpenter to do Halloween 4. And on top of that, Joe Dante was going to be Carpenter's choice to direct the film. So how much of this would have really been Carpenter's idea? I'd say the genesis of it. It would be where he had wanted to see the franchise go. But really, this was going to be a collaborative effort between some heavy hitters in the genre. John Carpenter, Deborah Hill, Canon Films, Joe Dante. That sounds like a horror fan's wet dream, right? But alas, Mustafa Akkad rejected the script, calling it too cerebral, and insisting that any new Halloween film must bring Michael Myers back as a human, a flesh and blood killer. With Carpenter and Hill relinquishing any stake they had in the Halloween franchise to Mustafa Akkad, the script being abandoned, and Halloween going into production with an entirely new team and new idea, that would be the last we'd hear of John Carpenter and the Halloween franchise for quite some time. The Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers film that we ended up getting, was a success. Fans loved the movie. They were happy to see Michael Myers back. And as Mustafa Akkad put it, his main goal was to bring Michael Myers back. That's what he wanted. That's what he felt the fans wanted. And he was right. But looking back on it, would you have liked to have seen this Halloween 4 over the one we got? Or maybe would you just still like to see this movie now? Halloween is in this weird transition phase where it's going to need to come back sooner rather than later in some way. And I, for one, think that if you're going to bring it back, you should really swing for the fences. Don't stick to the tried and true formula. And I think that an idea similar to this is really cool. This would have literally given us a ghostly, supernatural Michael Myers. One that had always been hinted at and is still hinted at in many films to this day, but never really leaned into. This movie would have done that. I can't say whether or not this movie would have been good, whether it would have been better than the Halloween 4 we got. But I can say this. No matter what John Carpenter said in the subsequent years after this movie and what fans were led to believe, that he had no interest in Halloween, that he didn't care and he was just collecting a paycheck, that wasn't true. He had an affinity for this property. It was his baby. He wanted to come back multiple times. He had ideas multiple times. The reason it didn't happen is because Mustafa wanted to stick to babysitter, killer, and a white mask. And John wanted to branch out. Whether this would have been good or not, maybe it would have been welcome to a franchise that a lot of people say has gotten stale. Maybe Halloween needs a shakeup. Maybe Halloween needs to challenge what fans have come to know. 
We'll never see this movie get made, unfortunately. But it's always interesting to dig back into a time capsule, talk about what was, what could have been, and what might be.